What's going on, U.S. History people? This is Mr. Norris. And Mr. Lawrence. And we have progressive video number one for you today. We're going to get into characteristics of progressives. Who were they? What were their beliefs? And what was some ma major legislation that was passed during this era? Big, big topic to know for U.S. history. All right. So the following. It says progressives were a group of people who set out to tackle the problems of their era. They did not form a single group. Instead, they formed several groups. This era was made up of many different movements and many different kinds of Americans. So we need to identify what are three major characteristics of progressives. But before we do that, Mr. Norris, when you see the word progressives, what other word do you think of? I see progress, which means to kind of move forward and maybe have some sort of improvements. Absolutely. And that's kind of the idea behind the progressive movement. All right. So what are some characteristics. Well, the first one is many progressives would be found in urban areas, mostly city dwellers in comparison to populace who are farmers. We also see they come from an, the educated professional class of society. So many early progressives were doctors, loyals, lawyers, social workers, clergy, and teachers. You had a wide array, you had a wide array of concerns and questions that these groups had. And finally, the third characteristic is a rising power and influence of America's middle class. So as the United States is industrialized, as we see more people working in factory settings, it creates this burgeoning middle class. Guys, everybody do us a favor right now. Circle middle class for us. That is a huge characteristic. So take your pen or pencil right now and circle the term middle class on line number three for us, please. All right, so let's get into some beliefs and goals of the progressives. Now, they believe that abuses of power by the government and businesses could be ended. So those monopolies could be ended. And also, Abuses of power by people like Voss Tweed could be ended as well. So the idea of this is to stop or curb government and business abuse. They also believe that scientific and technological developments could improve businesses, government, education, and family life. So they are taking modern advancements like science and technology and trying to improve daily life with it. They were very focused on capitalism and improving capitalism, and many of them were weary or concerned with a growing movement called socialism. All right, so what are some factors that help to aid or bring about the progressive movement? Well, first of all, this new developments and fast communication. So many more people living in cities. You had mass circulation of magazines, newspapers. Ideas could move much quicker during this time period in this newly industrialized urban setting. The country also experienced an economic prosperity, so resulting in an optimistic feeling uh, and really a push that supported reform. People were doing well, so they felt this was a good chance, a good opportunity to make some changes within society. We see that people are less willing to make reforms when the economy is not doing well because number one concern at that time is make sure you have a job, make sure you're able to really take care of yourself and your family. So it's a little different when things are going well. People are willing to make a change. Okay, so let's talk about progress towards social and economic reform and consumer protection. So we have this term muckraker, not to be confused with muckraker. Muckraker is a very important term. Notice it's spelled with just a K. It is not cracker. It is craker, muckraker. And... <laughs> And this is a very, very, very important concept that you should be familiar with. So they helped bring reform issues to the attention of the public through their work as journalists, writers, photographers. Mr. Lawrence, who was that famous photographer, Muckraker? Jacob. Right now I'm doing the photo. Oh, yeah. Psh, 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 psh. Reese, right? Reese. Jacob Reese. Or artists. And they expose corruption and injustice in society. So these are writers and people who bring attention to the public's eyes of injustices and corruption. Now, one technique that some of these muckrakers, not muckrakers, muckrakers employ is something referred to as yellow journalism. What is yellow journalism? It might sound familiar to your earlier studies from U.S. history, but it's reporting of exaggerated stories in newspapers um, and magazines in order to increase sales. So it wasn't necessarily lying, but it was maybe at times exaggerating certain parts of stories in order to really sell more papers and get more people interested into these stories. We'll actually see yellow journalism come up again when we talk about the Spanish-American War in the next unit. And they were authored by Muck Rakers, not Rackers. Rakers. Okay, so we have the pure food and... I'm sorry. Because they're raking muck. They're raking muck. They're not racking it. They're raking it. 
All right, so we had the Pure Food and Drug Act in 1906 and the Meat Inspection Act of 1906, both passed in the same year, both passed in response to the same thing, which we'll figure out. So this was a law that ended the manufacture, sale, or transportation of food and medicine containing harmful ingredients and required that containers of food and medicines carry ingredient labels. So if you have food in front of you or a drink, check out the label, and it will tell you the list of all the ingredients. It goes back to the Pure Food and Drug Act, which establishes the Pure Food and Drug Administration. All right, so another piece of legislation of the progressives was something referred to as the Meat Inspection Act of 1906. It was a law that required government inspection of meat shipped across state lines. So if you're shipping meat across state lines, that's an example of what kind of commerce, Mr. Norms? Interstate commerce. That's right, it's across state lines, so interstate commerce, which falls to the federal government to regulate. So this is going to come about during the time period of progressives because of guys like Upton Sinclair in the jungle, which we'll talk more about, and really use, using maybe what some would say a form of yellow journalism. Yeah, and we'll check it out in class. It'll be cool. We'll look at pictures. We'll read some gruesome stuff. People losing fingers, rats in hamburger meat. It's delicious. All right, so what was the significance of the book The Jungle? Well, it was a graphic description of the meatpacking industry that got the public angry because of unsafe and unsanitary conditions in order to maximize profits. All right, guys, that is it for video number one. Please flip to the video response section of your packet and answer the following in at least three sentences. How is the Pure, and Food, Pure Food and Drug Act an example of progressive legislation? Tell us what it is, what influenced it, and how does that relate to the progressive era? Thank you guys for watching, and we will see you back here for video number two.